Good morning, everyone. Uh, like we've done uh, within the last three weeks, um, we're taking the topic assessment. Uh, just to remind ourselves, um, count is the platform that we've used for the assessment within the last three weeks. Uh, there are a few things we need to participate in the session. First is your mobile phone. Uh, which will act as um, your answer selector. Uh, you need a stable internet connection. Uh, we have a few people in the office and they'll be participating in the session as well, um, as well as the Kahoot profile. Uh, it's important that the Kahoot profile is named, you know, I mean, uh, your name in it. I mean, you use your name, <laughs> of course, uh, so that it will help with the grading and uh, uh, final collation. Uh, so we'll start now. I will be sharing my screen and um, we'll... all right. Okay. So there'll be no practice uh, session today, and that's because uh, I feel we've had a hand of the platform. So please join. Kahoot does it. Everyone, yes. Kahoot is not it. Thank you, IBK. Thank you, Timmy. Thank you, John. Oh, wow. So please join, please join. And you Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So please join. Use the pin nine one zero seven seven five two. Thank you, Dara. Thank you, Esther. Lola. I guess this is Sophia. Um I'm not sure. Yeah. And then yeah. Sophia Okiki, then Damian, Tony Sin, Timilei, Babs, Richard. So we'll start in 10. Okay, we'll start in 5, 4, Three, two, one, and we go. Hey. Just a reminder, the faster you answer the questions, the more this is the test. The more score you get. Hi, Justin. Hi. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were talking to me because I was muted for a bit. But yeah, um, so this first question is about discovery, really. Uh, you know, we go through childhood and then we get to a point where we start to explore who we are. Um, and I mean, it's a composite of many things, but generally speaking, if you take uh, into serious consideration the elements here, you know, if you appraise your own behavior, you are very intentional about the kind of environment you find yourself in and that you create for yourself. Um, if you're very, if you uh, take, again, you're very intentional about you know, the experiences you expose yourself to um, and your belief system, you know, and this is not just, oh, okay, 
you know, your faith, but, you know, the things you believe to be true. Um, and then I think the 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 ones that really uh, also move the dial, your habits, um, your training, uh, your relationships, a lot of a lot of what happens to us or a lot of what we experience in life um, depends on these things. Um, and so, yeah, the answer is all of the above, um, as I see most people have selected. Uh, there, there will be more factors, but these are generally uh, speaking very important in determining who you are, and you must appraise them from time to time. Yeah. Thanks, Christine. Um, so we go to the next question. The winner of this round, Timile Yifani. <laughs> The next question. Which of the following is not an outcome of great attitude? Five seconds more. Which one is that? Okay, sorry guys. Um yeah, so I, I think of course the way these have been set is to trick you slightly. But if you think about it, you know, having a great attitude will never ensure the achievement of said expectations. I mean, that has to do with putting in the work and uh, sort of you know, getting on with, with the tasks you've been set. So I think that one was, uh, I mean, fairly easy, but I think the other uh, options made it a little bit tricky, which is which is what makes it interesting. Yeah, okay, let's, let's carry on. Thank you, Tristan. Uh, and we have two missing stuff in the chat. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question now. How do you get better on journey to become indispensable? Five seconds more. All right. I mean, in in this um in this one there can only be one answer really i mean consistency consistency in what you know um uh, setting clear expectations for what you know um but when you actually uh apply yourself to training and and your and to developing your skills you start to see yourself improve and people start to see it as well uh because whatever gets given to you uh, you can you can actually deliver at a high level Okay. Thank you, Justin. And Richard. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's go. Next question. Why do you need to be selective about your relationships? Ten seconds more. <laughs> Right. Um, again, another tricky one. Um, and this is one of those where it's like, you know, which answer is most correct? It's not like the others are really wrong. They're actually all correct. Uh, but I think the answer that most reflects um, the outcome of your relationships, and actually is a very sobering thing to know, is that um, the circle you find yourself whether at work, but principally your social circle, the people you call your, you know, as they say these days, your day one, strongly influence your success, you know, um, and this has been shown to be true over time. So it's, it's worth noting. All right, let's carry on.
Thank you, Justin. Um, to the chat now. Motola. Next question. So, what point was the second video of Viola David addressing? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess this one is quite straightforward. Um, for those who, uh, it's, it's, it's a question about paying attention, really. Which one is the second video? So, yeah, uh, knowing knowing your work, yeah. Okay, um, I think most people got it. So let's, uh, let's continue. Wow. <laughs> and I've been delaying my responses so that it's not me, yo. But anyway. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, next question. <laughs> What's the concept of 1% improvement? Okay, so I think this one is is one of those often overlooked things where we're always looking for, you know, the big changes, you know, the things we can do that, you know, will just change the game. Uh, I think once you've mapped out where you're going, the question is, are you consistently and gradually taking steps in the right direction? You know, and that's the whole idea. It's making those small positive changes in the right direction consistently. Okay, yeah, let's continue. Shakira. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the linchpin? Let's go. Okay. Uh, again, I think most people got the answer right here. Um, yeah, there's a bit more than just passion or talent. And, you know, this lines up with the book we're reading at the moment. Talent is never enough. Um, you need to do more. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I think on this point, um, we often mistake um, where we are, the context of the work we're doing with the fact that we're still responsible, you know, so it doesn't matter whether you're doing the thing at the office, you're doing it um, in church or in the mosque, or whether you're doing it um, in the, in you know, in the community, maybe you are your um, estate secretary or something, you know, or the treasurer in your um, church department. The question is, how resourceful are you? How creative are you? And how do you problem solve? Or are you the kind of person that, that passes the monkey? Pass the monkey is, when well, they give me a task, I will identify everything that needs to be done on that task, how it needs to be done, to the detail. I just really won't do it. I'll take all of that and take it back to the people who gave me the job and say, eh, so I have a problem with question one. I have a problem with question two. I have a, you know, you've not solved anything. You've just you've done the same thing they've done and, and handed them back a bigger problem. Um, yeah, anyway. Being resourceful and being a creative problem solver. Um, back to you. Thank you, Tosin. Now to the chat, Shakira again. All right, we'll go to the next question. Guys, forgive the spelling of following. Which is not 
Five seconds more. Really good. Um, and I think the folks who drafted the questions were trying to throw you off with the negative, you know, which of the following is not. So if you read quickly, you might think the opposite. Um, but yeah, obviously being submissive is not what you require to be coachable, um, but you do require being open-minded, um, ready to learn new things. Um, you do require being adaptable and ready to change. You do require having a positive attitude. Um, half the time, um, I find that some people aren't, um, they, they are, they are intent on passing on what they know to be true when they're in a sort of learning context, you know, versus kind of listening, downloading, learning from the person you're with, even if you think you have something to say, do the learning first, and then obviously share your thoughts. I think that's more valuable for you, you know, uh, if you're going to be coachable. And there's no one above coaching, not one person. Uh, there's a, a popular story of NBA um, athletes. I mean, the, the guys at the top of their game, uh, LeBron, Kobe, and, and the likes of them, who have this, um, they have these sort of psychology coaches that they go to. This is even outside of their clubs and their training regime that's been set for them, you know, that they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars and they will fly. I mean, there's one of them, in, I, I forget the guy's name, I think in Atlanta, that, you know, you book an hour with him and it costs you, I don't know, tens of, tens of thousands of dollars. But when you go to see him, you sit down, you tell him your problems, then you wait and let him, you know, work on you, let him help you. I mean, these guys, have gone through a lot of training, they know a lot, they have a lot of money, but they still know they need to be coached. You know, you need to be pulled out of something. You need to be helped up with something. Um, a lot of times um, these days, I think the whole idea of it, it, it's my world, I can get whatever I need on Google. We have to be careful about that, that idea. You know, um, sometimes you just need someone who is a little bit more experienced or who looks at things from a different perspective um, and is more senior to you, uh, seen more in life to help you through some tough situations. Um, yes, you can also be coached from a distance. So I'm not saying don't, um, you know, don't follow people that you admire online or that at a distance. That's, that's fine, you know, but again, um, being submissive is not uh, one of the attributes. Back to you. Thank you, Justin. Now to the chat. Sakira again. Next question. Who is a creative problem solver? Let's go. Great. I mean, that that that's it really. Uh, I think this one's got probably the highest number of correct answers. Yeah, you know. Um, again, the question here is designed to, um, or the answer is designed to, you know, for you to select which one is most correct, and it's really thinking outside the box and coming up with effective solutions. Um, yeah. Okay. Back to you, Obiora. Thanks, Lucy. Now to the chat. Shakira, I think the internet is doing it so good. <laughs> okay. The next question now. What did Denzel Washington video address?
Okay. Um, again, uh, of course, the way the questions are designed, it's not like um, most of these are um, wrong, but definitely uh, the triangle, the red one is wrong. You know, it's not asking to hide from fear, but um, the correct answer here is being able to take informed risks, uh, being courageous and doing the work. Um, you do, when, when, we, when we talk about taking risks, this is not about abandoning all of your common sense you know, um, and all of what you've learned. But it's that you cannot play safe every time and expect to grow. I think that's what Denzel was saying. And he gives an example after example of his own life's journey. And he also talked about when he's been courageous and when things fail, regardless. So he talked a lot about failure, you know, but he says he doesn't want to fall back on anything. He wants to fall forward and fail forward. You know, uh, but um, if we look at his life, it's been marked by him being extremely prolific in his industry and putting in the hard work uh, to the point now where, you know, you see a, you see a, his name on a on a film title, you know, you're getting something special. And and we all have the capability to do that. Um, so that's the learning from from Denzel. All right. Let's let's move forward. Thanks, Dosim, <laughs> to the chat. So, me say. <laughs> All right, next question. Which of the following is an example of what you need to do to become the best version of yourself? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, they say that success leaves clues. And one of the clues um, of success is that if success is going to be lasting, then you have to have a strong work ethic. You know, nothing great ever happened by accident. You know, whether for a collective or as an individual, whatever it is that you really want to um, achieve requires you to um have a very strong work ethic. And, you know, there's this thing about attitude that keeps um, being a recurrent theme here. Uh, so, so, so important. I think um, it's said that, you know, your talent will get you in the room, but oftentimes your attitude and your behavior, um, your disposition keeps you in the room. You know, or it might be the thing that gets you out <laughs> of the room, you know, uh, whatever those rooms are. Uh, the, and, and the irony is that I think a strong work ethic is easier, and in my view, it's easier to develop uh, than a positive attitude. A lot of times, folks who don't have a positive attitude are the last ones to know it. You know, everyone kind of sends them signals because it's maybe... For certain people, you don't want to be too loud about it because when you are, you get that negativity come back. Um, and that that is a huge barrier. Um, sometimes when folks are wondering, so why why doesn't X happen for me? Happen for person A, B, or C. Um, um, a lot of times it's important to hold up the mirror and ask, you know, how did I behave in that context? You know, what was my response? You know, um, in that context. Very, very important. Okay, let's carry on. Thanks, Susan. Now to the chat. In the lane, your pen, see you. <laughs> okay, next question. What key factors determine who you become? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it's interesting when you are when you you know especially if we if we go back to when we were in uni you'd uh hear when people get um poor grades they say oh they gave me a c they gave me a d you know they never say i got a c or i got a d so you're i mean you you find in life that you actually have to own your own actions and your own decisions um ultimately um a lot of things derive from that yes your environment is you know going to contribute very very important you know the society you find yourself in will contribute your relationships can hold you back it's true you know but ultimately all of these things you have the greatest unlock you have the sort of um, the greatest uh, cheat code which is your choices your decisions your actions you know when you start making uh, you know the decision to work at a certain level to be a certain way you know um in 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 the context you find yourself things begin to move you know um our you know and, and i think this is in every nigerian cult culture uh, but in yoruba they say atele weniki tonije uh, for the Yoruba people amongst us, um, do we know what that means? I, I want to hear from someone to help me translate that. Who's going to volunteer? Because I know there are Yoruba people among us who have no idea what I said. So <laughs> somebody help me. Who's going to help? Shall I nominate someone? Hello. Hello. Okay, so I tell you what, if I'm not wrong, is the um, thumbprint. So, and of course, everybody's thumbprint is unique to them. So, yeah. no matter your identity is somehow, somehow connected to you. To the them. palm of your hand. Thank you very much, Sukomi. That's exactly it. You know, I tell you what, is the palm of your hand. And, you know, our people remind us that ultimately your destiny is, lies in your hands it's not the uncle that failed to sponsor you it's not the friend you know that promised and didn't deliver it's not you know it's not even the parents who you know they tried their best but you know you just felt it wasn't enough uh it's not your boss at work you know um you have to take responsibility um for who you are and who you become i think when I was preparing for this session, what was at the back of my mind was rather than do a technical session where we talk about, you know, the kind of skill sets that you need, you know, to win in the office, look at a few of our, um, how would I put it, our services and the kind of, um, you know, the stack in terms of your skills that you need for that. We, we know those things, but underlining those things are these fundamental things around you know, your identity, your behavior, how you how you show up, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And those things are more important. In fact, they are most important. They are fundamental to uh, what happens to you and your trajectory in life. Uh, let's carry on. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much. Still up in the chat, Tommy Sen. We see you, Damian. We see you, Bob. Let's go. Next question. What are the two key traits that are required in almost any progressive person? 10 seconds more. Wow, you guys broke it this time. Every single person got it right. Amazing. Um, I thought some people were going to choose charisma and good looks. Isn't that important? <laughs> it gets you, it, you know, it, it gets you, it gets you into some rooms. You know, it gets you some traction. Um, how about being a rule breaker or always having the right answers? I mean, again, some of these things are they're good. But you almost, as boring and as painful as it sounds, a strong work ethic, a positive attitude will never let you down. They will never let you down. They will never let you down. Again, if you look at all the questions we've been answering, it's centering around, you know, some of these themes. Um, so it, it, 
I, I think it's important to to embed those ideas uh, and to really go examine them uh, on a deeper level, even after this. Let's carry on. Thank you, Tosin. Now to the chat, filling the lead, Tony Sim. The next question, what is the complementary stack that the person should possess? Right. This is a tricky one. It's a tricky one, but it goes right in back to what was in the um in the presentation. So in the presentation, I presented three um elements as a complementary stack, and it was the ability to lead, to build, and to sell. Is it important to be able to manage, delegate, and control? Of course it is, um, especially as you move forward in your career and start to have more responsibility. But if I'm talking to younger people, if I'm talking to folks coming through from university or just, you know, at the cusp of, you know, your careers, starting your careers, I would say, you know, you need to be able to lead, build and sell. And, you know, you don't need to lead others. The first person to lead is, of course, yourself, you know, being able to organize, you know, uh, being able to self-motivate, being able to get up, uh, set your priorities and accomplish those priorities. Um, and then the second one talks about your technical skills and your abilities, uh, you know, what you bring to the table in terms of your um, technical abilities. And then selling is probably one of the most underrated skills that we require in this world. But it's the one that we all end up using. You know, you sell your parents all the time, especially when, you know, when you're in school and you need them to fund something, you have to kind of negotiate you have to paint a picture of why you need that thing um where it's taking you to um and all of that and that ability shows up in every area of your life you know if you're going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you must be able to sell if you're going to get married you must be able to sell you know uh, so it's not just you know in the in, in the workplace um these are life skills that would be great to have and and continue to build as you as you go along uh, on your journey okay all right let's carry on thank you so much for saying now to the chat Shakira is back <laughs> all right the next question each of the following is not a characteristic of a of an authentic of an authentic Authentic person. Wow. Okay. Um, not a characteristic. Maybe some people missed out the word not, but yeah, I mean. What are you going to do with being unfiltered? Yes, I, I think we're in that generation now, with that in that age where everybody has an opinion, everybody is offended. I mean, someone called it the age of offense. You know, something or the other gets under your skin, you know, and and now I think because we have the channels and also I think the behavior now is like, you know, you must comment on everything. And I don't I I know that we all don't do it. But we're in that age. Everybody has a comment about stuff, you know. Um, and then we're also in that age of cancel culture. You know, some guy or some lady does something, we cancel the person, you know. Um, it's so bad that you people people have said things a decade ago that they've forgotten they said, you know, they're now getting to a place of significance. Someone dredges it out of the dark alleys of the internet and said, Look at you, when you were 18, look at what you said. Um, it happened to one of our prime ministers in the UK, Liz Truss. Well, she was only prime minister for barely two months. 
you know, they dug out something she said when she was 19. You know, the full video. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know how they had HD video then, but it was so clear. You know, she couldn't even deny it, you know. Um, but unfortunately, she was no more that person. But it counted heavily against her. You know, we're, we're in that society now. So being unfiltered, I think, is actually quite dangerous. Uh, is why um, I think, it, you know, it does. It's, it's not a skill that uh, I don't even call it a skill. There's a place for being honest. There's a place for, for being candid. There's a place for obviously, you know, telling it like it is. But um, the last Yoruba um, adage I will say today is, uh, people say that you know um and um you know it's again that's that's having what i call good judgment you know and knowing when to be tactful uh it's not saying you can't be honest it's not saying don't put the cards on the table as it is oh Timmy Lane. <laughs> yeah you didn't you didn't have a confused look on that one this time you know this one. Yeah. You know, because um, some things in life are just, you know, they're just too heavy. And words, as they say, once you let go of them, they're like eggs. You can't scoop them up again. I remember a funny uh, scenario with my son, when my eldest son, it was, it was very, very young then, maybe barely two, barely two years old we went shopping and as we were approaching the till um there was this um man in front of us with a turban i think is indian you know he has a turban uh, had a turban on his head and my son shouted you know what is that on your head <laughs> you know? and the man turned and smiled you know as a two-year-old asking the question you know um but you can imagine how people feel when you point out a difference yeah, in a derogatory way, you know, uh, when people point out things that, you know, half the time people don't have um, a, a, any control over, maybe to do with their religion, their faith, to do with their disposition, their background, you know, or even, you know, like the kind of education you had. And these things leave artifacts with you. Um, uh, and 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 people point it out. It it, it can drive you uh, down a dark path. Um, so being unfiltered is a very is a very poor attribute to have. Okay. Um, let me hand it back to you, Obiora. I know there's a part two, but yeah, let me hand it back to you. Thank you, Jose. Okay. Um, so that's it. Uh, the final scores in top position. Bam. Second position, Tomisin, and the winner is none other than Shakira. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Uh, back to you, Tosin. Okay, uh, thanks. I'm just going to take a few more minutes of our time. Congratulations to the guys on the leaderboard. Um, well done, Shakira, uh, Tomisin, uh, and who was that third person? Um, the battle was well fought and you know Shakira came up uh, on top um okay so i want to continue with the interactive theme uh, and i just want to ask a question and i want a few people to try and answer the question um so this has to do with so one of the questions has to do with your team and the other question is for you you know in in your life uh, so the first question is, when we talk about 1% um, improvement, and I think I must have asked this uh, um, the last time when we had this talk. Uh, yeah, they're accusing Shakira that it's a Canadian internet that's letting her answer the questions fast. Oh, well, it has to be something. Something is working. So, <laughs> um, so I want to find out, you know, we are closing in on the end of the first quarter. Um, and I want to find out from you what change you will, what small change 
you will take on, you will own to implement in your team, in your team. So this is to do with work, you know, to do with the office. What are you going to own? What are you going to be responsible for? What are you going to say? Oh, this change is I'm making this change um, and I'm taking it, you know, I'm taking personal responsibility for it um, in your team. It could be a change that, you know, is personal to you or it could be a change that you you are sort of facilitating or coordinating on behalf of the team. So I want you to start thinking about it and here is what I want. I want everybody to write it down. Um, whilst we may hear from one or two people on the call, I'd actually like everyone to write it down and perhaps send it in to me. You know, um, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take your emails. So email me your answer to this question. So I might not call you, but you can email me. Um, so email me your answers to these two questions. So even if we only hear from three people, I want to hear from everyone. Um, so what small change are you going to take on within your team, within your, the business, uh, and you're going to be responsible for um, going forward? And you can, you know, it can be anything, but it's it's your it's your decision. Um, yeah, so who wants to volunteer to give us uh, their thoughts on this? Um, I'm looking for volunteers. You can put your hand up using the reaction buttons. Uh, but if you don't volunteer, I will call you anyway. I'll nominate you. Um, so regardless, I'm sure you you must be you must be putting something something down. Okay, no hands are up. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to nominate. Um, our dear Mr. Lawal, Mr. Ayotunde Lawal, what small change are you going to be implementing as a member of your team this year? Ayotunde. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Uh, so small change, first of all, get um, as much rest as possible. Um, operate with the highest form of efficiency. And I know these things are very esoteric, right? But um, it is what has the client given us to deliver, right? Outside of the things that we also want to do and ensure that there's a systematic of delivering these things. Um, yeah, there's one more time, but they're skipping them. So at least those two. Um, so get as much rest as possible so we are efficient enough. And then, you know, um, Deliver with some order or logic or some sense. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you mentioned rest, but I think rest is actually quite important. Uh, it's not resting to the point where it's at a detriment to your job, but obviously uh, carving out deliberate time to switch off and re re-energize, very important. And also, you know, of course, the second point, being effective and being efficient at, at what you do, um, finding those efficiencies, very, very, very important. Okay, someone I don't think I've ever called, Justine? Justine? If you're speaking, I, it's a bit difficult to hear you. Hi everyone. Um, so, um, in terms of change for me, practically my focus has always been um, working on myself, um, increasing my knowledge. Um, I, I think I personally have problems in communication. So um, I've always tried, I've always um, strived to work on that. And uh, moving on from this quarter, I think that would be my focus, my major focus, actually. Fantastic. I love it. And, 
Oh, sorry. Well, well um, again, okay, uh, for the team, yeah. Um, there's this particular thing I actually tried to okay for Kucheza specifically for work Kucheza. Um, it's about the fact that uh, we work with we're, we're all about play, we're all about fun. Um, I think I want to make Kucheza a little bit more fun. Um, we play a lot of games in Kucheza, but we don't play a lot of games with Kucheza. That's my drift. My drift. Um, we play games with other people, but within ourselves, we don't tend to do that. And I think that's something I need to bring to the team. We need to, take, we need to actually have some fun in Kucheza. Yep. Wow. That's, that's interesting. So Kucheza is a gaming company that plays games with other people that now wants to play games with itself. Um, no, but I, I, you know, more seriously, I see what you're saying, which is that somehow you shouldn't take yourself too seriously and you want to create that atmosphere where you guys can, you know, engage on a more social, um, on a lighter note. Uh, I think that's good. I think it's good. Um, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for stepping forward. Okay, so the second question I have for everyone is the broader context of this question, which is um, how are you going to make a difference this year in your environment outside of work? So in your larger context, you know, whether it's at home, it's in your social circles, it's amongst your friends, it's amongst sort of the relationships you have outside of work. Um, they might be, you know, to do with your faith. It might be to do with, you know, your your pastimes or your sports. Uh, it might even be your local, you know, uh, watering hole where you where you step it down uh, with uh, what's what's the raining um, tipple in Nigeria now? I don't know. Is it uh, Hero? No. Is it? Uh, I don't know who would know. Some somebody would advise us. But what are you doing? What are you? What what are you? What are you going to do? Um, to make a real difference in the lives of those around you this year, um, outside of work now. Um, so again, volunteers, volunteers, any volunteers? Okay, uh, Lola, Sophia? Yes, yes. Okay, hi, I just want to ask to uh, do I get extra points? <laughs> I wasn't the one handing out points. It's Obiora handing out the points. So um, I can tell him, I can say I give uh, Sophia some points, but I doubt it's going to happen. I'm not sure I have any. Anyway, on the um, I want to take better care of my family. Um, because of what management has allowed, I work home more, which I appreciate. And you know, you see your parents and you see them so old before your eyes, you know. And I know I don't have a lot of time with them. In fact, I feel like I won't borrow time with them because, I mean, nobody is sick, but just life, just cycle of life. So one thing I want to do this year is to be there for my family as much as possible. Thank you. That is that is absolutely lovely. That's absolutely lovely, and it's an often um, underappreciated, you know, area in our lives. The truth of the matter is, once you leave home, you know, uh, if you're if you're lucky enough to have been have spent some time at home with your parents, um, once you leave home, it becomes quite difficult to find quality time with your parents, you know, um, if you don't create it, if you don't put some kind of effort into it, it becomes quite difficult. And sadly, I have to say, the statistics show us that it's only when something negative happens that people take it seriously and go, oh, I've got to spend time now. You know, you don't have to wait and, and, and you know, Hopefully, God willing, nothing negative happens to our loved ones, but you don't have to wait for that. Uh, these are plans that we can make more intentional, um, more intentionally and, and take serious. I actually like that. I actually really like that. Okay, well, one more. One more. We'll take one more. We'll take one more. Any volunteers?
Okay. I am going to call David William. David. Good morning, Tosi. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think I'll just say um, be intentional about socializing. I think in our field, we sort of like get stuck with work most of the times, right? Um, especially, you know, working from home. Um, this week, I can actually literally really count how many times I've stepped out of, of my gate, right? Um, so for me to be socializing, it's it's really, really important to, you know, just interact with, have that social network of people. And of course, it sort of like helps you work as well, because by the time you go around, meet new people, have discussions, I mean, you don't know where that genius idea will come from. So uh, socializing is actually one of my priority lists. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for me. Thank you, David. Uh, another another important one, you know. Um, if you ask people who are in their 60s and 70s, you know, uh, and, and 80s, and, and I'm sure most of us have heard of this, you know, when they ask people, you know, what do you regret most in your life? You know, they don't go, oh, you know, I didn't get that salary raise or, you know, I didn't get into that, you know, tech bro job or whatever. You know, what they regret most is usually around things like relationships, you know, um, the people you wanted to spend time with. They were on your mind, but, you know, you just didn't because work, because of other things, which could have been moved out of the way with a bit of planning. But, you know, time waits for no one. The time passes and you know, things happen and you find that, you know, there's a deficit there, you know, and I think also life stage, super important. Uh, when we are this young, myself included, um, let's pay attention to the people that we value uh, and 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 make deliberate um, um, efforts to connect with those people. Uh, they will be, you know, your network. They will be around you when you need them and it's also a great uh way to relieve the stresses of the of the day of a, a great example of this here um actually um both gb and, and bukola as great examples um when you know you see them prioritize something like tennis you know it, it, sometimes you you go okay it's for the sport but actually when you look at it um, there's a lot of social engagement, social interaction that happens in those places that, you know, people then show up for you in other areas of your life because over time you've built a relationship, you know, outside of work um, and outside of, um, you know, other contexts. So it's it's quite important, quite important. Thank you very much, guys. I, I think before I go, I just want to, if GB can speak, I just want to bring him in. Um, uh, before uh, we wrap up finally, um, hopefully you, he'll be able to share uh, one or two thoughts and nuggets on the on the subject of being indispensable. Um, it would be great to to hear from GB. GB, good morning. All right, uh, thank you so much, Justin. Uh, good morning, uh, excellent uh, session. Congratulations to uh, Shakira. And I'm sure she cheated, even though I shouldn't say that because she was part of the planning committee. And that's why I, knowing that I'd, you know, come top, had to recluse myself. Um, thank you for the two questions, Justin. Thank you for uh, taking the time to help us. Um, I'm pretty sure that we will all send our emails. I think it's important. Um, and I don't want to threaten or, you know, there's no punitive measures. This is, um, I think this is very helpful when, you know, our leader, like Kirsten, wants to communicate with us because one on one. Um, and I'm not sure many organizations do this. So I, I don't want to take it for granted. So please do um, send in your responses, even though you've answered verbally. Even so, I assume all our leaders, please also um, set the example and do send in these emails to us. And um, there's not much to add other than I think. We've, um, if we do find one thing or two things that we start to um, implement as changes, um, micro changes, those things add up. 
uh, if you look back five years ago and you ask yourself, what could I, if I'd known this five years ago and I've been doing it every day, where would I be now? Uh, and it can be in any stage of your life. So it's never too late. Um, Samuel L. Jackson at the age of 48 began his career. Morgan Freeman at the age of 50, you know. So yes, you finished school or you didn't even go to school. It does not matter. You've joined an organization where your greatness is going to be celebrated and you're in a team of great people. So uh, thank you so much, Tosin. Not much to add. Uh, excellent session, excellent month. Uh, and looking forward to maybe having you again this same time next month. Thank yeah, you. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, thanks, thanks, GV. Um, and thanks, everyone, uh, for your time and your contributions and for uh, participating. And uh, Shakira, uh, we, we're going to send your gift. We routed it to Lagos, so I don't know how, how that gift is going to get to you now. Um, maybe we'll give it to number, number two, or maybe they'll be kind enough to ship it to Canada. Uh, for you. Uh, all right, everyone, have a nice day and uh, enjoy the rest of your of your of your day. Thank you, uh, Obiara. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much, Dustin. Uh, bye, everyone. Have a nice day. <laughs>